blue face ain't something we see around here. What can I do you for, sir? Name's Paul Jacobs. I'm a journalist. I came from Blackwater. Well, nice to meet you, Mr. Jacobs. What brings you all the way out here? I heard you folks got a store. Ha! Right, <laughs> a store, you say? The only story is these bozos getting drunk and having fights every night. I can't say there's much of anything else that's quite important out here. Wait. So you were never around when they had the Valentine Massacre happen? You know, when that psycho came around killing Oh, uh, okay, hold your horses, sir. Listen, okay, I understand that you're new and whatnot, but you're asking way too many goddamn questions. You need to watch what you say around here, okay? Whoa. I ain't come to cause no trouble. I was just asking. That's a particular situation of which we don't speak on around here. It'd be best if you didn't either, sir. Okay, then. Uh, can I get another drink to go? Nobody said a peep. I hope I Not one person wanted to speak on the Valentine Massacre. That's right. I just couldn't understand it. It happened so long ago. About 10 years now. What could possess a whole town and not speak on something that made news everywhere? Either this town was hiding something from somebody. Or somebody Whoa. was hiding from this town. Right. And as a journalist, it's my responsibility to get to the bottom of it no matter what it takes. Mr. Jacobs, I heard you wanted to speak to me. Yep. How may I assist you? I need somebody to give me some answers around here, Sheriff. The situation that happened 10 years ago, Damn why won't nobody speak on it? Are you serious? And please don't lie, Sheriff, because I will be getting this on film. Listen, the last journalist that came around here ended up missing. So what you're telling me is this is a live confession right here, right now, on camera, about y'all committing murders in this town. No, you damn dumbass. What I'm saying is, if your values your fucking life, you wouldn't be asking questions about this. This town is trying to do your sorry ass a service. Enjoy your stay at Valentine. We'll provide all your amenities and essentials. Y'all got free peanuts too? Get the hell out of my goddamn office. Don't got to be easy now. Okay, it's a new day. You only stuck in this town for a week. Hopefully we can deal with it. These folks getting on my goddamn nerve. It's all right, though. Motherfucker been working out. I wish one of these fools would try me. Put the p -p -p paws on their ass. Look at them. Flex them. Yeah. Been hitting that gym boy. Oh, shit, what the fuck? What the hell was that just about? Did the bartender to spike my drink or something? I knew that whiskey had a funny taste to it. Now I should go beat that bartender's ass. Top of the morning to you, sir. How's the weather up there? <laughs> Quite fine, I reckon. Till you came blocking its natural beauty. A good one. Hey, listen, man, I just I just wanted to ask you a few questions. My name's Paul Jacobs. I'm a journalist from Blackwater. I, I wanted to know if you knew anything about the Valentine Massacres out here. Yep. Folks don't speak on it, though. Well, I was hoping maybe you wouldn't mind speaking on it. I mean, I've been having a real hard time trying to get some folks to talk to me. I got no problem providing compensation for your time. What's so important about this town that you need to know what happened 10 years ago? Well, I mean, every town and every person has a story to tell when you agree. That I do agree with. Come on up. So 
So when did you find out about the Valentine massacres? Well, I was there for it. Trust me, it wasn't pretty. It didn't start like that, though. Only thing I can say is that they turned one innocent thing into something horrible. Treacherous, even. Help. See, you may have heard of the Valentine Massacre, but no one ever talks about the serial killing spree that went on after. Folk from all over that came to visit ended up missing one by one. It was so bad that the people coming looking for their family members and loved ones. Well, they came up missing all the same. Got to a point that folk claimed that the town was cursed. No one would set foot in Valentine. That is, of course, unless they decided to be hunted and murdered just like the rest of them. He's become somewhat of an urban legend. Speak of the Valentine ghost. He'll come for you next. Naturally, as people decided to leave and more people decided to stay away from the town, well, business hit a decline. Oh, shit, that was good. All right, look, I'm going to reshoot it again, but I need you to talk up just a little bit louder. All right? Matter of fact, don't worry about it. You, you keep going. Go ahead. What would you like to know? Okay, so is there anything that you probably know about the person that was committing these crimes? Well, many believe it was a famous clown by the name of Soapy. He started off as a local circus act in Valentine. Every day, just around the corner, you could see Soapy in his act. Everyone would stop by and watch him dance. Hell, I think he was the reason this town made most of their money back in the day. Soapy the clown? I think I remember that name. I believe I seen him when I was a kid. Wouldn't be much of a surprise. Soapy the Clown became a household name for most folk. He'd get booked for every festival and hold down from here to Armadillo. People just absolutely loved that crazy looking clown. Hell, I never thought it was nothing special, but even I couldn't resist. I mean, the clown had a talent. His moves were amusing enough, but his personality, well, it was absolutely intoxicating. Pretty soon, people couldn't get enough. It was almost like a drug. So, what was it about Valentine that made everything go bad? Word is, it started when he got booked to go to the saloon in Valentine. Everybody knows how rowdy they get when they're drunk. But nobody expected what would happen that night. Staying still too long makes me nervous. You can... Hey, partner. Let me through. Hey, why don't you show your face? From the moment Soapy stepped in that establishment, you could tell that the vibes were off. Half the people in that establishment were so drunk off their ass, it's a surprise that they were even standing up straight. Hell, looking bike on it. I don't know why the fool stayed in the first place. Well, you did say you had an infectious personality, so I figured that'd be a great place. You know, a whole bunch of people having a good time, ready for some entertainment. Well, that would be the case if it weren't for the fact that these were a whole bunch of angry drunk men. You see, Valentine was made of some of the most ruthless bounty hunters there was. They'd do anything to get their money. And they'd do anything to have their fun. A group of gun toting rider rough boys and a wild, goofy, slap-happy clown like himself. Well, that combination just don't mix well at all. So, basically, they bullied him out the saloon. Well, they most definitely tried. What they didn't expect was for him to put up so much of a fight. Those poor drunk bastards tried to hit that man with everything they had. But he just wouldn't fall. Not one bit. 
He just kept swinging and kept moving. And that infuriated him. Got to the point to start pulling guns at him. Now, Sophie, he was an entertainer, but he wasn't no killer. So when the guns started going, he And so they ended up shooting him. Did they bury him in the town? Not exactly. You see, he ended up getting the chase. And as many bullets as they used, they could not get that damn plane to go to the ground. He just kept running. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll buy you a new coat once we get rich because this is a story to tell. I don't know why you ain't wrote no book about this, man. So go on now. Had to catch him. Well, eventually he was cut off by one of the bounty hunters. All tied him and brought him back to the saloon. Let everybody get one last look at him. One last laugh. The folk conversated on what they should do with him. They figured that since he was so tough that he couldn't bite the bullet, they figured another way. Some folks suggested to burn him. But who would want to go through all that trouble and attention? They figured a more humane solution, if you want to call it that. They decided to take him to the cliff by the Dakota River. Some say you can throw in the thing down there and it'll just sink. Never to rise again. Ooh, what about the fish? Shut the fuck, I was going to tell you about the fish. The fish was going to eat the bodies or whatever fell down there. If it was like flesh or something, then it would just get ate up. Because the fish were the only thing that would ever rise from that river. Wow. And this is a story. Well, listen, I'm kind of tired. Uh, not if we pick this up tomorrow. If you're down, we can meet up same time. Please, let me go. Why are you doing this? Who are you? Uh, let me go, God damn it. Damn. Uh, 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 please, man. Come on. You don't got to do this. Look, you need some money? What you want? Help! Somebody please! Help me! This man is crazy! Somebody! Anybody! Somebody help me, please! Please! Help! Help! Hey man, is this... Does this town ever, like, you know, get to you? You know, with everything that happened or whatnot? Like, I feel like I've been seeing things ever since I've been out here. Did it ever happen to you? This place tends to have that effect from time to time. You ever thought about leaving? Well, I left a long time ago. But they say if you don't like the road you're traveling, it's best you get off and walk. Just so happened I landed by Valentine. You know, life has a funnier way of bringing things full circle. All the traveling I did, just to land bike in the same place I grew up. Well, I mean, if we speaking openly, uh, I don't know how the hell you do it. Me and myself, I'm more into the city life. If I went out here trying to break this story, I don't think I'd be out here anyway. Speaking of, what else happened? Well, there are a few rumors going around that in the middle of the night, some folk would see Sophie coming up, but not many would live to tell the tale.
Man, this is crazy. You're giving me everything that I needed. I was just coming for the massacres, but this here, this is a story by itself. Speaking of which, we still never got down to that. Would you happen to recall the events that happened on the night of the massacre? Like it happened yesterday. Oh yeah, now we talking. All right, uh, start anywhere. Yeah, well, I think it's about time I showed you something. Okay, I took some shots of here earlier. So this is where you want to finish the interview? I think probably right in front of this screen to be perfect. Just relax. I told you I had to show you something. Just pay attention to the screen. Wow. They still keep footage of Soapy in the archives. And I do remember them now that I'm looking at them. My parents used to talk about them a lot. Yeah, this is where it started for old Soapy the Clown. Right here in good old Valentine. These are the memories you can't get bite when he was pure. Right before he turned rotten. Right before he gave this town what they deserve for all their years of corruption and lies. A town that breeded so much hate. Well, it was only natural that they produce a monster. Wait, this footage. Well, I've seen this before in my dream. I saw this exact spot. Oh, this can't be real. He actually murdered people over there. He murdered people everywhere. And kept all the evidence in the hidden spots. He kept a piece of something from everybody he slaughtered. From the day he turned to the day he disappeared. Heads, arms, all sort of limbs, intestines, and whatever else you could imagine. Even things you probably couldn't imagine. Killed everything that was inside. What really scared folk the most is that if you look over in the distance, you can see him walking around like nothing ever happened, waiting for his next victim. That's when everybody realized soap it was coming. Well, I mean, I could understand getting your get bike on the people that did it to you. But what was the reason for him taking out the whole town? I mean, don't it sound a little bit heartless to you? The whole town was in on it. Huh? What you mean? The town wanted him dead. The town. The very same place that he worked so hard to get away from. Was the same place that drug him bike down. You see, when they sent for Soper to perform in Valentine, he knew it was a setup. Folk in town didn't want nothing more but then to make a mockery of what he'd become. And to remind him that he'd never be nothing more than a clown. No matter how far he ran or how successful he'd become, he'd never amount to nothing in the end. But a man's pride is ultimately his biggest downfall. You see, Soapy went in and performed that night to prove a point. That he wasn't afraid. And he wasn't ducking nothing. And so, when he went in there, he gave me a to shut me Underneath that river, he made himself a promise. A promise to absolve this town of its sins once and for all. To do away with any more of the crabs that infested the barrel. So this sick fuck murdered hundreds of innocent people. All approval point. 
I mean, you said he killed innocent folk that was just looking for their loved ones. I mean, it sounded like they ain't had nothing to do with it if you ask me. Earlier, you stated that the acts of the clown were heartless. But was it not heartless for a whole town to cover up the murder of an innocent man? Was it not heartless that the town labeled that man as a criminal to cover up the murder? What the hell? All these documents in the archives just sitting around? I gotta let the laws know about this. Most of all, is it not heartless that that same innocent man's death was never to be spoke upon ever again? Only for tourists, travelers, and journalists all alike to come and visit, to brag about visiting the place of that innocent man's death. All to make a quick profit, without even knowing the full and true story. Now that's heartless. And a man without a heart is a man without a soul.